right, today we're going to talk about the Pythagorean theorem, and I'm going to show you how to do some, show you some examples of uh, how to solve for the missing side of a triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. What page is this? Page 500, no, yeah, 547. 547. And let's start off with a right triangle first and talk about some of the... terms you need to be familiar with in a right triangle. All right, in a right triangle, you've got one 90 degree angle. The two sides of the triangle that make up that 90 degree angle are called legs. All right, right triangle's got two legs. The side that is across from the 90 degree angle, that's called the hypotenuse. When you're using the Pythagorean theorem, when you're finding the third side of a right triangle, you always want to label the sides of the triangle. You're going to use the letters A, B, and C. The legs are always letters A and B. It doesn't matter which one is A and which one is B, but the two sides that form this 90 degree angle are always labeled A and B. The hypotenuse is always labeled side C. Alright? Always labeled C. Alright, so theorem 8.4 on page 547. in a right triangle. The sum of the squares of the lengths, the sum, which is addition, of the squares the sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Another way of saying that is a squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Okay, so here's how it works. Page 548, example one. You're given a triangle. You're told that it's a right triangle. And you're asked to find missing measures. All right, so if you're finding the missing measure here and you're given a 6 and a 13, and this side is labeled X, all right, step number one, it's a right triangle and you know two of the sides. First step is to label the sides. The sides that form the 90 degree angle are always A and B. The side opposite the 90 degree angle is always side C. The formula is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The next step is to substitute. Your value of A in this case is 6, so 6 squared plus B is equal to 13, so 13 squared equals. Here you can call this side C or you can call it X, either one. Sometimes the question will be asked and this third side will be labeled and sometimes it won't. 
So for right now, we'll call it x squared. That's your first step, or your second step. Your first step is to label the sides. Second step is substitute. Third step is to square everything. So 6 squared is 36 plus <coughs> 13 squared is 169 equals x squared. So add 36 to 169. So 205 equals x squared. In order to remove the exponent from the x, since it's raised to the second power, you would square root both sides of the equal sign. So the 205, if you got a calculator and you're using it, is still sitting on the bar or in the answer area. So if you push the square root button, 14.3 is equal to x. Now, if you see this answer as 3 times the square root of 29, you need to understand that 3 times square root of 29 means 3 times times the square root of 29. And if you see this as an answer choice on a multiple choice test, just convert it to a decimal. So in your calculator, you could take 29 square root and push times 3 and hit equals. And why does that equal something different? Oh, because I wrote this down wrong. The example in the book has this as a 15 and I wrote a 13. So we'll talk about this again later or on the next problem. Another right triangle where you're finding the missing side. Step one, label the sides. The sides that make up the 90 degree angle are A and B. The side opposite the 90 degree angle or the hypotenuse is side C. The Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now you can substitute. The A in this case is X, what you're trying to find. So X squared plus B is equal to 9. 9 squared. And C is equal to 11. All right, so this problem is a little bit different than the last problem. So square everything. X squared plus 81 equals 121. In this case, when you're not finding the hypotenuse, you have to subtract in this step. So you're trying to get the x squared by itself, so you're going to subtract 81 from each side. And the x squared is equal to 121 minus 81. That's probably 40. All right, so now you can square root both sides. The square root of x squared is equal to x. So x equals the square root of 40, which is 6.32. So let's round everything to the nearest tenth, unless you're told to do different. So this is 6.6.3. Page 548. Page 548. 17, a 7, and an X.
and again label the sides on either side of the right angle you've got sides A and B the third side in this case now if you label those two first is C the theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared and you can substitute 17 squared plus 7 squared equals x squared. Seventeen squared is two eighty nine plus seven squared is forty nine equals x squared. So three thirty eight equals x squared. If you find the square root of each side. then the square root of 338 is 18.4 equals x. And now, since we found the square root of 338 and it's a non-terminating decimal and we rounded it, you're gonna, your squiggly line replaces your equal sign. And what that squiggly line means is approximately. It means that you rounded something. Any questions? Okay, uh, bottom of page 548. Uh, a Pythagorean triple. set of three whole numbers, a Pythagorean triple is a set of three non-zero whole numbers. A, B, and C such that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This is a quiz question, and I've seen it on some EOC practice where they refer to the term Pythagorean triple. All right? Pythagorean triple means that if you're given three numbers and you're asked if they are a Pythagorean triple, like the numbers three, four, and five, what they're asking is, does three squared plus four squared equal five squared? That's what they're asking. A set of three non-zero whole numbers such that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 3, 4, 5, all right, does 3 squared plus 4 squared equal 5 squared? That's the question. Does 9 plus 16 equal 25? 9 plus 16 is 25. 25 equals 25. So if the two smaller numbers squared and added together equal the third number squared, then yes, they are a Pythagorean triple. Everything's got to be a whole number. The two smaller ones squared added together need to equal the third one squared. Okay? On the bottom of page 548, 
there's a list of Pythagorean triples. All right, if you want to look through that list. All right, turn the page one more time. Um, converse of the Pythagorean theorem says that. Now, here's the Pythagorean theorem used in reverse. And an example. The type of questions you'll be asked in regards to the converse. They'll give you a triangle. You'll be given the three sides, and you'll be asked if the triangle is a right triangle. So here's the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. If the sum of the squares of the legs Some of the squares of the legs. Well, that's not how they word it. So, sorry about that. If the sum of the squares of the shortest sides of a triangle is equal to the square of the longest side then the triangle has a right angle which means it's a right triangle. So if you're given a triangle, And you're told that the sides are 6, 8, and 10. And then you're asked we'll call it ABC is triangle ABC a right triangle. In this case, what you would do, take the two shortest sides and label them, A and B. Longest side would be C. Then you would write the theorem, A squared plus B squared. And what you're trying to find out is, does it equal C squared? Okay, does 6 squared plus 8 squared equal 10 squared. So you square the sides. Does 36 plus 64 equal 100? Well, 36 plus 64 equals 100. So the two shorter sides, the sum of the two shorter sides squared is equal to the third side squared. So when that's the case, then this is a right triangle. So your answer would be yes. If you are asked the same question, let's try it with a different triangle. Say you're given this triangle. It's labeled M and O. 
the sides are 4, 15, and 23. And you're asked the same question, is MNO a right triangle? Well, does 4 squared plus 15 squared equal 23 squared? That's the question. So if you square everything and find a sum, does 16 plus 225 equal 529? All right, 16 plus 225 is 241. So 241 does not equal 529. So this is not a right triangle, okay? Is it a right triangle? No. Well, here's the last theorem that you have to get into your notes for today. Because now, this is not a right triangle, is it? All right? Is A squared plus B squared greater than C squared, or is it less than C squared? Good, it's less than. A squared plus B squared is 241. C squared is 529. A squared plus B squared is less than C squared. So let's look at this theorem. If A squared plus B squared is greater than C squared. Triangle is acute. Okay? So this triangle is not a right triangle. If A squared plus B squared is less than C squared, triangle is obtuse. So what you'll be asked is, given the triangle with the following sides, is it acute, right, or obtuse? Well, in this case, the 241 was less than the 529. Your A squared plus B squared was less than your C squared. So this is an obtuse triangle. If A squared plus B squared is greater than C squared, it's an acute triangle. If A squared plus B squared is less than C squared, it's an obtuse triangle. And we've already said it, but we'll say it again. If A squared plus B squared equals C squared, the triangle is right. Okay? Does anybody have any questions? All right, your assignment for today is on page, starts on page 552. Nine through 12. and then 21 through 23. <clears throat> Show all your work. Show all work. Do it on a separate sheet of paper so I can collect it tomorrow if I want to. And you gotta show all your work for each problem to get credit for the assignment.